first knot we're going to see is the slightly rarer Kent knot, which as Adam is showing here looks great with a thin knitted tie. The Kent creates a small neat knot and the way to achieve this is to have the wider end on the opposite side to the one you normally would, so on the left. Twist the wider end halfway round and pass the shorter end over the long one. Then bring the long end round the back and over in front of the short and pass it up the back and through the loop you've just created at the front. Then remember to grab the knot and keep your finger gripped down in the middle as you tighten the tie to keep a dimple as this looks far more impressive and creates the vital hourglass between the knot and the blade of the tie. You should always have shape otherwise if it's straight from knot to the blade end you end up looking a little bit like a McBusted reject. The next knot is an old classic. The four in hand offers a long slim knot that also works well with knitted and silk ties alike. This simple knot is easy to achieve with the tie the normal way round this time and the longer blade right hand side. Pass the longer side over the left, round the back, returning to the right hand side. Loop it round the front once more, passing it up the back, over the top and returning it through the loop at the front. Again, don't forget to keep your finger grip down in the middle as you tighten the tie to keep a dimple on the vital hourglass between the knot and the blade of the tie. We're going to finish up with the half Windsor knot. This time you want to have the tie the normal way round again, with the blade end slightly longer than the previous two occasions. Pass the long end over the front of the shorter one again, bringing it up round through the back, back down on the left hand side of your body passing it behind the knot all the way around the front again before returning it back up and through the loop to complete the knot. Again, focus on dimple and shape. The beauty of this knot is you can alter the size depending on how loose or tight you make it. I'd always opt for smaller and tighter personally. Also, one of the main things I always see guys at fault with is the length of the tie. Either way too short, like a rebellious school kid, or way too long where it's in danger of getting caught in the fly, which isn't a great look. The ideal length is one inch above the waistband of your trousers when you're stood up straight. Don't be afraid to tie it a few times to get this right. Then it won't dip in your suit, although a tie clip will also help this. But remember, the clip should be around the same height as the bottom of your sternum, halfway up the tie. No higher, no lower. Ever. Hope that's offered some food for thought on different options on your neckwear. I've been Stephen Kelly. Please subscribe to Men's Fashion Magazine's channel for all style tips and advice.